So, how are you? Uh, how's your morning, afternoon, and night? <laughs> uh, I'm uh, in Seoul. Uh, I'm teaching in the Department of North Korean Studies at IHWA. And I, I mean, I was like, uh, I hope uh, I will be there in, in Rostock. Uh, I went there twice, and that, that's a small, cozy, warm city, which I like. And when Christine uh, asked me if I want to join this program, I was like, oh, <laughs> can I go there? But, you know, uh, maybe, hopefully, next year, uh, I, will, I will be there. Uh, Today, uh, I just have one hour, which is relatively short, I think. Uh, so I will be very quick. And my topic is everyday life uh, and minorities in North Korea. Uh, I, before I start, I just want to say two things. One, if you have any questions, please let me know, uh, either with chatting or uh, you can you can uh, use the hand hand raising somewhere. Yeah, or uh, just uh, speak out. That's the best thing. If you want to ask anything, just speak out. That I think that's um, the best solution for us. And the second thing is, I'm very sorry, but uh, if you have slide, uh, the PPT material, uh, I had a mistake on page 29. So please delete it. Okay. Should I now to uh, share this? material this is the material uh, I will be talking about uh, this topic uh, but the, the the numbers and the uh, the graph it's about South Korea um, people divided families and their descendants in South Korea not in North Korea so you can you can look it at, but it's not about North Korean thing. So please think about this. I'll be starting the first pages from now on. Okay. Uh, my name is Kim Seok Kyung uh, from this department. Uh, and Ehua Women's University. In case if you have any questions later on, please use my email address, which is very easy to remember, okay? And uh, I have four different parts in my lecture, but first two parts, uh, I will just skip, skip uh, I mean, you know, I'll be talking uh, in a very quick session, okay? Uh, and my main topic today is minorities in North Korea and North Korean refugees. Uh, because Professor Park in he does um, just just following lecture after me, I think he's talking about this, you know, how how Korea was divided. Uh, and North Korean history things, I guess. Uh, uh, I just want to small, uh, simple things from the first part uh, that is, I want to say uh, that North Korea was not divided until uh, 1945. 
before 1945, Korea had, had been one countries more than 1300 years, consecutive years. Uh, and 1945, when World War II was over, Korea was divided into two, which most Korean people never imagined. And after that, a lot of things all happened and many Korean peoples uh, have divided families and separation uh, and sad stories from this division since then. And then the second part, I want to talk about uh, North Korean uh, people's everyday life. Uh, that is not so rich, strong military type of uh, everyday life from 1945. At first, uh, it wasn't really like that, uh, but uh, as times go by, uh, North Korean people's life are uh, more legit and uh, the Kim family, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il and the current leader Kim Jong-un, their leadership is, uh, has been so strong as times goes by. That's the thing I want to talk to you. Uh, and then I will go to minority people and North Korean refugees, okay? Korea was divided in, uh, in 1945, uh, the two different region. Uh, and in the Northern part, USSR, if you remember the Soviet Union uh, was there and USA, A, the American people, American army came to the southern part. Uh, so two different region. Uh, Korea was one country, but now uh, the north and the south, uh, two different countries has been started since 1948, okay? And then uh, if you know the Korean uh, history, there was a war, uh, the Korean War between uh, 1950 to 1953. And a lot of such stories are coming out from the war, okay? And then everyday life in North Korea, uh, I will be skipping this part because we do not have enough time. Uh, you can uh, look through this part and if you have any questions, let me know and I, I can explain what it means, okay? And now, here, that's the part I want to uh, talk about today. Uh, I, uh, I did not have, uh, I mean, minority issue is not uh, my, I wasn't originally concern on this issue, minority within North Korea. Uh, that, uh, I, my first concern was North Korean refugee or North Korean defector people who are living in the South. But when I had an uh, interview with uh, those refugee people, uh, I was thinking there's a lot of, uh, there's different type of minority people within the boundary of North Korea. So I want to talk about this issue with you today. The first part, first type of minority in North Korea 
is like women, children, disabled, and elderly people, which we can see everywhere. Uh, in your country, uh, you have also women's issue, children's issue, disabled people's issue, elder people's issue. Just like that, they are minorities in North Korea. And the second type of minority, it's sort of unique because uh, those abducted people by North Korean authority which is not usually happening in other countries. We will be talking about this issue. And the th third type of minority people in North Korea, it's kind of token people uh, praised by North Korean authorities, like, you know, heroes, various type of heroes. So who are heroes in North Korea? We. Uh, we are going to talk about. Uh, women's issue is very interesting in North Korea because here you can see there was a law on sex equality uh, announced on July 30, 1946 in North Korea. So from the very first days of North Korean, North Korean uh, authority started, they had uh, this law on sex equality. Naturally, they are thinking, most North Korean people are thinking that uh, women uh, are enjoying their uh, equality in North Korea. We are at, uh, but when I had uh, interview with a lot of North Korean defector people, they are saying that uh, such a discriminating uh, expression against women. Uh, they are arguing that woman uh, is woman's ability is about half of man's ability, and uh, women uh, do not need to study more because their uh, goal of life, their their meaning of life, uh, is. Uh, supplementing to their husband. Uh, their, their meaning, uh, woman's uh, issue, woman's life goal is to uh, satisfying their husband and uh, they raise their children and that's their uh, life goal. That's what they are saying, which is very uh, unnational based on this law. But um, the people I had a talk with, they do not think it's, uh, it's irrational at all. They did not, uh, uh, North Korean people usually do not think uh, this kind of, uh, expression is not uh, is not discriminating at all against women, which is very uh, strange thing to me. I can understand what why they are thinking that way. But anyway, uh, their attitude is very uh, traditional and uh, discriminated against women, but they have their law on sex equality. That's a North Korean uh, reality today. And children, uh, their North Korean mass media are all the time arguing uh, North Korea is a paradise for uh, children. 
in their children. But uh, in reality, uh, most of children in North Korea are forced to work. And if they have, uh, uh, if they have, uh, if North Korean city, any city has public ex execution, uh, school children must be must be attended and observed the, the execution site, so, which is very uh, unrational, I think, uh, to children. But uh, this is the reality of North Korea. Of course, there's a small portion of children are raised in uh, very wealthy environment, but most of children in North Korea are uh, staffed and forced to work and must, uh, they forced to observe uh, this kind of public execution. And the disabled people, <laughs> This is another issue for me. Uh, listen, I, I, I'm writing a paper on this uh, disabled peoples in North Korea. Uh, I did not realize at first uh, what it means by uh, many North Korean defector people are, are saying. They said uh, disabled people has a high price of woman and woman has half price of man. I didn't really realize what it means, but uh, if you have a labor skill or if you have a, a labor ability, uh, that makes sense in a way, right? Physically, uh, man is stronger than woman. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I'm saying every is the case. Of course, there are uh, exceptions, but uh, when we usually saying that man is physically than man, uh, woman, and then disabled people may be uh, physically weaker than woman. So the uh, standard, the the, uh, the scale that North Korean authority uh, are thinking about a people, human being, is like you know labor skill or labor ability. So that that means. Uh, the disabled people's uh, price or uh, value is about half of women. And women's value or price is about half of men. That's what they are saying. I um, first, uh, at first I was sort of shocked by the way they are saying, but when I, uh, when I realized how North Korean authority evaluate people's uh, human beings value, then it makes sense within their, their logic, within their, their frame. So disabled people are uh, a typical uh, minority case in North Korea. And this is another, uh, I'm, I'm entitled second type of minorities in North Korea. Uh, those women, children, elderly and disabled people's issue uh, are everywhere. In your country, uh, there's also women's issue, children's issue and um, 
disabled people's issue, elderly people's issue. But this second type of minorities in North Korea, uh, I'm not sure you can even imagine this type of uh, minorities in any countries. Uh, among them, former Korean Japanese people who are living in North Korea. They are currently are living in North Korea, but uh, they were living in Japan. Originally, uh, ethnically, they are Korean, and most, most of them are uh, moving to Japan during the Japanese occupation period. Uh, 1945, uh, Korea was liberated from Japan's occupation. Before that, uh, Korea was uh, uh, occupied by Japan from 1910 to 1945. During 36 years, uh, many Korean people are moving to Japan uh, for their jobs, maybe, and their living conditions and education. And then after uh, World War II, Korea was liberated, but many people are still living in Japan. And then among them, uh, almost 100,000 people are coming to North Korea uh, between 1959 through 1945. Now, uh, North Korean authority want them to come to North Korea and then Japan, uh, Japanese government want them to uh, move out from Japan. That's why uh, almost 100, thousand people are going to North Korea and now they are very low state they they uh, they are very low status people in North Korea because North Korean authority are thinking they might be spies and they are untrustworthy people. They are saying, North Korean people are saying that uh, this former Korean Japanese people uh, may be a spice of Japan or spice of uh, South Korea. So we cannot trust them. Uh, that's why uh, they cannot go up, go up to high-ranking high positions uh, and high-level education. Uh, it's, it's not easy for them to go to uh, universities. Uh, only they can go to like sort of technical part uh, but uh, they cannot uh, have uh, valuable jobs in North Korea. Uh, so this kind of, uh, this type of people, former Korean Japanese uh, who are living in North Korea is like, you know, lower class in North Korea today and he, here this part um, I uh, ask you to delete th this thing uh, the divided families and their descendants in North Korea are also uh, one type of minorities and these numbers uh, related to those divided people uh, in South Korea uh, 
uh, North Korean authority does not collect this number as far as I know. But uh, South Korea, in South Korea, we are uh, uh, collecting this number and then uh, uh, South Korean government are making uh, the record in case uh, in the future they might uh, they might be able to meet their family members in in the north. So that's uh, why we are uh, collecting the uh, information and numbers. But uh, this one is my uh, mistake. So. Now, uh, no, uh, this divided people, divided families and their descendants in North Korea is also a uh, minority and their status is low in North Korean society because uh, North Korean government, North Korean authority uh, doubt have have a strong doubt on divided family members. So they are not loyal enough to the North. That's what uh, North Korean authority people are thinking. So uh, they usually do not have uh, enough uh, compensation and they cannot uh, they cannot have good uh, education chance. And uh, also in the social hierarchy, they cannot go up to the uh, high positions status. And uh, I wonder if any of you know about these stories. North Korean government abducted uh, Korean airlines, I mean airplane, Korean airlines. This person uh, is uh, Mr. Wang. Uh, bring my father Uh, campaign has been uh, moved by this person, Mr. Wang. When this person was just two years old, his father uh, was abducted to North Korea. His father was in this airplane uh, and then that airplane was hijacked by North Korean agent. Uh, from then on, he cannot see his father so far. So he, Mr. Huang is still is asking uh, to bring his father to his home. Uh, so far, North Korean government does not answer uh, anything. And then uh, I also, I'm also curious if anyone knows these stories. This uh, woman, this girl's name is uh, Yukoda Megumi, when she was 13 years old, she was kidnapped uh, from his home, from his hometown, which is uh, Niigata, Japan. North Korean agent went to Niigata, Japan and uh, kidnapped this girl, uh, 13 years old. And uh, 
this uh, she's not only the kidnapped person by North Korean authority, like his, like here, from 1977 to 1983, uh, very similar kind of incident uh, continuously happen in Japan. That, that is the issue currently North Korea, I mean, Japanese uh, government uh, are arguing uh, to return this abducted people to Japan. Listen, her father, Shigeru Yokota, Mr. Shigeru Yokota, uh, he's the father of Yokota Megumi. Uh, he was, he has been kind of symbol of Japanese abducted uh, return movement. And he just died uh, a, a couple of days ago. So uh, this type of uh, sad stories when uh, when we talk about uh, the minority people in North Korea, I think we have to remember this type of sad stories has happened uh, in North Korea and in the long run, uh, I mean, uh, if possible, sooner the better, uh, this kind of is issue must be resolved. North Korean authority must uh, send them back to their hometown and to their family. And But so far, there's no uh, significant uh, movement at all. And any of you remember Mr. Otto Von Beer? Uh, he was a college student from the United States and he traveled uh, North Korea in December 2015. And he had been there in Pyongyang a couple of days when he uh, was coming out to Pyongyang, uh, North Korean regime, North Korean police uh, arrested him. And then later on, he was sentenced 15 years in prison in North Korea. Uh, to when he was in uh, North Korea, he was on North Korean television uh, television program, and then he was begging uh, to send him back uh, to his family. But finally, when North Korea uh, released him. Uh, he died after a couple of days in the United States. And his, uh, his parents, his mother and his father, uh, since then, uh, has joined a uh, human rights movement against North Korean government. And now, uh, who, do you have any question? Okay, 
Um, now, uh, there's another type of uh, North Korean um, unique uh, phenomena. I think North Korean uh, society has its own caste system. Uh, there are high class people, low class people, uh, and middle class people. And North Korean, within the North Korean caste system, there are three main classes like core, basic, and adversary, which is the lowest. Uh, and their education, their people's education level, job opportunities, and dating chance and marriage chance, and their career process are affected this North Korean caste system. And this is the uh, main point. If you are a, a member of core class, then you must be a member of Korean Workers' Party. If your father's a member of Korean Workers' Party, then you are more likely to become a member of Korean Workers' Party uh, later on. But if your, mem you, if your father is not a member of Korean Workers' Party, then your life chance is not so good. Uh, it, if you are born in North Korea, you have to be a member of any of these organizations since uh, eight years old, seven years old maybe, uh, until the day of you died. But uh, the most uh, prestigious uh, group is the Korean Workers' Party. Uh, you are if you are older than 18 years old and your, your family background is good enough and your ability is uh, skillful enough and, and uh, you, if you have uh, anything good, then you are more likely to become a member of Korean Workers' Party than uh, you belong to the core group and your family also. But if you failed to join the Korean Workers' Party, then you and your family, your descendants, your, your sons and daughters uh, are not so, uh, they, they, they cannot enjoy their bright life in North Korea. So it, it, there's a big barrier between the Korean Workers' Party members and others. And then uh, here, there's another type of uh, minority people in North Korea, which is heroes. Uh, I think it's another type of uh, minorities because uh, although the North Korean they are praised by North Korean government. There's also uh, duties and they are uh, something that they have to do if you are a hero by selected by uh, North Korean government. Uh, the highest hero is Republic hero or the, and the second type of hero is Edward hero. And uh, if you uh, are, if you uh, join the war and then made a breakthrough, then you are becoming the public hero by North Korean government. Uh, but there's no war since 1953, right? So there is no way for uh, 
them to become more Republic hero. Uh, when you think about it, there's no hero. So there's no way for you to join uh, the world and there's no way for you to become the Republic hero in North Korea. But uh, if you attack the South Korean army or if you uh, save uh, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un's uh, picture uh, from fire, then you can become a Republic hero. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if you can catch up uh, the, the, the world picture. It's not uh, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un, the leader themselves. The picture, when, when there was a, uh, there is a fire broke out and uh, there's a building, uh, in, in the building, there's the picture of those uh, readers, then you have to save safely the picture then you can become a hero uh, although maybe you are dead by the uh, by the fire then your uh, sons and daughters can be enjoyed uh, the the hero medal but uh, uh, if you are not enjoying, I, I mean, if you uh, are not attempting to save the picture, then you will be you will be in big trouble. Um, there's another type of hero, which is which is interesting mostly woman uh, is far uh, difficult than men to become a hero but this type of hero uh, woman only can have this title, maternal hero. How you can be a maternal hero? Mm, here, uh, here's an example. Park Geum Oh gave birth to her 10th chi child at Pyongyang Sanon. Uh, then this Park Geum Oh, the, the woman, uh, Become, become a maternal hero, okay? So uh, if you have, have uh, more than seven children or eight children, 10 children, uh, if you get, gave uh, birth, uh, so many children, then you can be a maternal hero in today's North Korea. Uh, back to 1970s or 1980s, North Korean government uh, do not encourage uh, many children, women, uh, many children to uh, in in one family. But nowadays, uh, North Korea also. Or uh, want to have more children. Uh, so if you give many, uh, many, if you have many children in one family, then the mother can be a maternal hero nowadays. Here's another uh, token people, uh, minority type of, uh, special type of minority in North Korea. Uh, 
uh, triplets. Uh, this Pyongyang Sanon is a uh, is a hospital, a special hospital for uh, women and children, uh, and on two thousand. On uh, February 18, 2021, uh, uh, this year, this Pyongyang Sanon have five dolphins triplets in this in this hospital. So when they have uh, these triplets, North Korean government uh, uh, like uh, get, give special care for their mother and this children, and the current leader Kim Jong Un uh, has a special message to them. Uh, so these triplets uh, are very uh, valued by North Korean government. Uh, when they went to school. Or uh, and um, when they went to like uh, when they joined to um, army and uh, when they have a wedding ceremony, then uh, the reader gave a special present for these triplets. Uh, on the compensation, these triplets has uh, uh, more duty than others. Like they are, they must eagerly work for North Korean uh, government, especially leader, and uh, they. Um, Uh, uh, they are e they they are eagerly sacrifice themselves for the leader. It's their duty because uh, when they were born, the leader gave a special care and special present. That's why they have a special duty for the leader. Okay. And um, this person's story, <clears throat> I think, uh, uh, is unique. His name is James Joseph Dresner, and he was originally American soldier on uh, the border between the North and South. And he defected to North Korea through demilitarized zone. <clears throat> he was a he was a army member <clears throat> in uh, 1962, and he crossed the DMZ area and went to North Korea, and then. He uh, was there. He's been uh, there in North Korea since then, and he became more actor in North Korea. And he's a he's a. Uh, this is the uh, citizen card of Pyongyang City, and he's a citizen of Pyongyang. Uh, and his two son, James Dresnock's two sons. Now, uh, they uh, have trained, have been trained in, in North Korea as a special spice. So uh, his, these two people on, 
uh, every once in a while on North Korean television show. And then they are openly arguing that they are working for North Korea against United States. Uh, and now we are only having 10 minutes. So if you have any questions, please let me have first. And then if not, if you do not have any question, then I will go through the North Korean refugee people's issue. Can I have your question or not? Well, I have a question. Okay. Yes, yes, on. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you for your lecture. And um, it's just like a simple question. I was wondering why North Korea abducted the Japanese. Ah. Was it to gain some information? Mm. Uh, as far as I know, uh, North Korean government uh, want to train spy people with uh, native speakers. Does that make sense? Uh, when, when was it? 1986? 1987, uh, there was a car, uh, there was a Korean airline was bombed uh, along, I mean, you know, when the spy Spy co name called Mayumi uh, was in the plane, airplane, Korean uh, airline, with his uh, with his partner, and then they uh, installed a bomb in the airplane, and they are coming out the airplane. Uh, then, I mean, uh, in, in, in the stop section, they are coming out the airplane and the, the airplane is exploded. Okay. And uh, uh, all the people in the airplane were, of course, dead. But uh, that's why Mayumi was out of the plane. She was alive with, uh, he, with her partner, but her partner was, uh, uh, he, he, he ate uh, the emperor and he was also died and she, uh, Mayumi, was only the survivor of this airplane. And she uh, is now still uh, living in South Korea. And she said she was trained uh, by uh, uh, Yokoda Megumi because she uh, was disguising uh, Japanese, not North Korean. Does it make sense? So there's uh, some uh, abducted people, not just Japanese. Japanese people are um, more frequent than others, but still there's a Lebanese and there's uh, European people you know, a uh, small portion of uh, European people are abducted also. And of course, South Korean people are abducted. 
uh, because uh, the uh, North Korean government trained their uh, spies, uh, their um, spy trainees uh, <clears throat> by those, uh, those uh, natural tongue, I mean, original speaking people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why uh, they are at the North Korean government of uh, kidnapped. Uh, I think so many people. And Japanese now Japanese government are uh, arguing send them back to Japan. Uh, as far as Japanese government uh, Mm. knows there's there are 17 kidnapped people in North Korea. So when you check out the Japanese uh, news uh, issues, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, this kidnapped people's issue and then, you know, send them back right away kind of thing, they are almost uh, are saying so. That's the uh, very critical issue uh, in North Korea, in, in Japan uh, and North Korean issue. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the current leader Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, openly admitted uh, that uh, North Korea kidnapped Japanese people uh, and we are sorry. When he met uh, the Prime Minister, Japanese Prime Minister uh, Kuizumi in 2002. And I think it wasn't really planned and uh, it wasn't really, you know, prepared type of thing, it, it's, it's just coming out uh, from Kim Jong-il's mouth. And then uh, Japanese prime minister, or, you know, he was, he was startled. <laughs> and then all the Japan, Japanese uh, uh, peoples, uh, when, I mean, you know, prime minister and uh, foreign minister, you know, those people are, was uh, uh, frightened. And then uh, also uh, North Korean uh, high ranking officials also are frightened, surprised because it wasn't really planned thing, but uh, Kim Jong-il said so. Uh, and then uh, Japanese, people's uh, opinion is, is so, uh, I mean, they, they really do not like uh, North Korea. So since then, the uh, North Korea and Japan's relations has been deteriorated so far. And nine o'clock. I think uh, Professor Park in he is here. I have to go out. He's here now, and it's it's nine o'clock already. You should be continue uh, then your last two slides. I think uh, it's it's better to abrupt to make uh, such a break now. Mm. Uh, provide your slides to the participants too. Can I just go through? Yeah, if Professor Park is mm. uh, agree, uh, then you can go uh, through. No, I mean, you know, <laughs> is he? I think he's, he, he's here now. Yes, I wrote him. Right. 
Please go ahead. Hi, Professor Kim, how are you? <laughs> I'm... Christine, how are you? Uh, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Let me please let me let me simply explain the situation. Okay. Uh, of course, I do understand my class between according to the Korean time between nine o'clock and nine forty-five. But hmm. Professor Kim, if you want more time, if you need more time, absolutely you can do that. Do you, do you know how many minutes do you need more? I mean, I can I can. Uh... Uh, you know, I can finish now because it's another issue from now on. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to. I don't want to interrupt you. No, I, I'm fine. I mean, I I love to listen to your <laughs> lecture as well. But <laughs> <laughs> I will be. I, I, I will be kicked then. Um, this uh, <laughs> North Korean refugee issue. Uh, uh, I will be very, very quick. Uh, I think uh, if you have, uh, I think um, this is the, uh, I mean, North Korean people is, is, you are not so familiar to meet with North Korean people usually, right? But this uh, North Korean refugee people, some of you um, might meet uh, North Korean refugee people and uh, helping them and uh, have a chance to talk with. And but nobody knows how many people come out from North Korea because North Korean authority does not uh, collect the information and you know open the information at all. And most uh, North Korean people, when North Korean people come out from the north illegally, uh, most of them go to China. And the Chinese government also think them as illegal intruder. That's why Chinese government does not collect any information uh, at all. So we do not have any info. And this graph came out from the South Korean government. Uh, but this number is how many North Korean refugees are coming in, uh, in the, into the boundary of uh, South Korea every year. It doesn't mean this number of people are coming out from the north at all. Uh, so many people are coming out from the north to China, and then they went to um, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and, and Thailand, and then uh, coming into the south. Okay? So, this number of people are coming into uh, the South every year. Can you see the number drop down? Why? Do you, anyone can guess? Uh, corona? Mm, you, you know, Corona breakout here, 2019, right? Here, 2012, Kim Jong-il, the current father, was dead uh, the December of 2011. And then 2012, 
Kim Jong Un, the current leader, start to rule North Korea. Okay. That means uh, under Kim Jong Un's leadership, uh, this is far difficult than uh, the his father's period. I mean, uh, North Korean people coming out to China is far more difficult than his father's period. You can see, right? And then uh, 2012, I mean, 2020, 2019, uh, at the end of the 2019, the corona broke out, right? That's why 2020, the number is far dropped down. And this is the interview contents with North Korean refugee people. I think that's about it. If you have any questions, I can answer, but <laughs> if not, you know, uh, I will be out <laughs> of the class. And Professor Pagini is waiting for us, for you. Uh, Yongchan Park? Do you hear me? Yes. You hear me? 